Welcome to the Selling from the Heart podcast on the SalesCast Network. You've joined a global movement of sales professionals who are dedicated to being authentic and building trust. We call it Selling from the Heart. Together, we are on a mission to bring sincerity and substance to the sales profession we all love. Get ready to be inspired and equipped as we join our hosts, Larry Levine and Daryl Amy. Are you ready to take your career to the next level? One of the best ways we found to do that is to surround yourself with like-hearted sales professionals. And we've heard that saying, you're the sum of the people that you hang out with. Well, if you wanna hang out with some sales professionals that also wanna take their career to the next level and believe in selling from the heart, we invite you to join us in the Selling from the Heart Insiders Group. This is a weekly gathering of like-hearted, like-minded sales professionals and sales leaders. We truly build community each and every week. One of our favorite things is they're up close and personal with thought leaders, former podcast guests, and people that challenge us to grow in sales. We would like you to join us for our next up close and personal. Just go to sellingfromtheheart.net slash free dash pass. That's sellingfromtheheart.net slash free dash pass. And we look forward to seeing you in the Selling from the Heart Insiders group. Hello, and welcome back to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Your co-host, Daryl Amy, here today with Larry Levine. What's going Uh, on, Larry? Hey, we got all kinds of things going on. Great seeing you. Man, we are rocking and rolling in the first quarter of 2024. Here we are. It's March already. Holy smokes, things are happening here at Selling from the Heart. Lots of great things are going on and things are moving and shaking. We've got an amazing conversation uh, just on deck today. Just a few moments here with Ben Tago about trends in sales and what's going on out there. It's going to be a really interesting conversation today. Larry, one of the things I'm thankful for that I think is the most interesting are all the interesting people we get to meet in this amazing community of like-hearted sales professionals right here at Selling from the Heart. And I'm so thankful for all the friends we've made over the years and the friends we're making even right now. You know, absolutely. There's one person I want to give a huge shout out to. He's near and dear to us at the Selling from the Heart community, past podcast guest. He's been in the Insiders group, Carson Hetty. We appreciate you. You are a true inspirational sales leader. You get it. You get what Selling from the Heart is all about. Uh, Here, here. Big shout out to Carson. And one of the things you want to make sure you stay focused on is staying motivated. And if you need some motivation, guess what? You need a daily dose of inspiration and you can get the daily dose of inspiration along with thousands of other sales professionals that are saying, hey, I want to stay focused. I want to stay motivated. I want to stay inspired to sell from the heart. You know, absolutely. Every day uh, you get a fresh dose, something I'm thinking about at the end of every day that I just put in writing. You get it the next morning delivered right into your email inbox Never to be repeated. I've said it over and over again. I have yet to repeat one. I think about it every day. It's past conversations, things I'm thinking about, something that I've read. I bring right to you every day just to keep you motivated. Well, we're holding you to that, Larry. And if you want to <laughs> get ahead, a daily dude. dose of inspiration, <laughs> sellingfromtheheart.net slash daily. And it's yours, a fresh daily dose of inspiration served up every morning. Well, today we are excited to have Benjamin Tago here in the studio He is the chief executive officer at Objective Management Group and is the leader of a pioneering and industry-leading firm in sales team evaluations and sales candidate assessments. Benjamin is at the forefront of transforming how companies approach sales performance. Objective Management Group stands out for its extensive data on millions of sales professionals, offering us today unparalleled insights into what it takes to succeed in sales. So join us as we dive into Benjamin's expert insights on driving sales success and the unique data-driven approaches of our friends over at Objective Management Group. Ben, welcome to the Selling from the Heart podcast. It's great to have you here. Daryl, Larry. Yes. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. We're looking forward to this conversation. It's going to be a good one. Likewise. um, I can't wait. Very excited. Ben, as we get started, you know the question that every guest on the Selling from the Heart podcast answers. And that is, what does it mean to you to sell from the heart? Oh, man, great question. Um, For me, selling from the heart comes down to selling with what I would call self-awareness. 
And what I mean by that is as a salesperson, am I able to take my ego out of the sale? And doing that helps me do a couple of things. One is it helps me focus on what the prospect, the person in front of me is actually trying to get accomplished. Not what is in my, what's in my bag or what's in my toolkit or what I need to sell them to hit commission my quota or get to president's club. But what is it that they are actually trying to accomplish? And then the second thing is it helps me just personally understand my own insecurities, my own fears, my own um, self-limiting beliefs or, or, you know, negative talk that might get in my own way and prevent me from being successful myself and prevent me from helping the person in front of me accomplish what it is that they are trying to accomplish. Hey, this is hey Ben. Thank you for sharing because this is, I'm glad that you brought up actually both parts of this and the self-awareness. But in the last part of this, I'm sitting here thinking about, if you follow along with us here at Selling From Our, we always talk about the inner work that you do leads to the outer success you will have. And what you just shared as far as the limiting self-beliefs and so forth, there's not a day that goes by that, yeah, I mean, at least somebody in sales isn't thinking about it. I'm going to raise my hand and say, you know, I've thought about it as well, even still to this day. And I'm glad you brought it up because not too many people really go down that self-awareness trail to really unpack who they are, what they bring to the forefront that can help somebody. And it's, put, it's being willing to put that mirror in front of your face. Mm-hmm. Who am I? Yeah, absolutely right. And And, you know, we talked a little bit about what is it that you see the most, uh, the highest performing and the most successful salespeople do that's different than those that are average or bottom performing? And Larry, I think holding that mirror up yeah. and, and making a practice of holding that mirror up, you know, not in a way that you're beating yourself up, but just in a very dispassionate way of saying, hey, there's, there's some things that are good here and there's some things that I need to work on or that I need to fix or I just need to understand I, you know, kind of carry with me as a limitation. Um, that's what we consistently see for you know, three decades that we've been assessing salespeople. Uh, we see that consistently in, in our performance data. I love it. I love it. You know, one of the things I really like about the audience here at Selling from the Heart and this community of like-hearted sales professionals and like-hearted leaders that are, are dedicated to being authentic and building trust is that we've got an open-minded community that is willing, you know, not everyone's willing to look in the mirror, but I know that the people listening to this podcast are willing to put the mirror up in front of themselves and have an honest conversation. And this is one of the things I absolutely love about what you've done at Objective Management Group. And by the way, for everyone listening in, Objective Management Group is one of our favorite partners at Selling from the Heart because what they have done is incredible. Over literally decades and literally millions of salespeople and millions of sales leaders across multiple industries, uh, they've benchmarked, benchmarked what it takes to be successful. It's the ultimate mirror moment um, <laughs> where you're able to look at yourself as a leader, yourself as a, as a, a sales professional. Um, we do these team evaluations. What's really cool is being able to benchmark against best practices out there. And so what I love about this conversation today, Ben, is is you guys have created this incredible data-backed mirror, <laughs> the mirror moment to be able to look and go, here's what it takes to be successful. This is what I'm curious about. Here we're sitting at the beginning of 2024, interesting time in history. And another question going through a lot of our listeners' minds is, what's going on in sales right now? What are you seeing out there that's uh, driving success? And, and what are some of the trends that uh, that are really top of mind as you look at this incredible um, mirror that you've created with all this data? Yeah. 20, I mean, this past year was really, really interesting, right? In terms of um, some of the trends that we saw, the, the most interesting one I would say is um, no one's talking about it, but everybody's hiring. Mm. Everyone is hiring. Mm-hmm. You know, we half our business is assessing candidates for sales positions. The other half of our business is uh, evaluating the the current sales team, holding the mirror up to the the current sales team. And 
you know, the past couple of years have been great in terms of the number of people who where we are assessing. Um, and the way that 2023 started, I don't know if you guys remember, there was, you know, some uh, shakiness in Silicon Valley and some concerns about a recession. And we thought that sales hiring was just going to, you know, just drop, just fall off a cliff. And it was our best year ever. Better than COVID in terms of the number of salespeople who we were helping our clients and our, and our users to assess. There were more open positions, more assessments for those positions. Um, companies are hiring. Doesn't, you know, you, you, you would look at the front, the headlines on the front page and um, don't necessarily see that. But the demand for high quality salespeople just, it hasn't gone anywhere. Mm. And so I, I want I want to touch on what you just said as far as the demand for high quality salespeople. So in because if you follow along with this is selling from the heart, I poke the bear on this, Ben, is I always say there's a difference between a sales professional and a sales rep. So when you're <laughs> it is. Yeah. I mean, there, there's some oh, truth yes. to that. Let me tell you. But when oh, you yes. look at um, there's always a demand for high quality salespeople. What are you saying, you know, looking at this through the, you know, assessing salespeople out there, what are you reporting back to these hiring people that says, you know what, that's a good fit and this is why. So what are you, what are you looking for or, or what's your data sharing with you as far as what's that high quality salesperson look like? You get what I'm saying? What is a, what is a high, yeah, what is a high quality salesperson look like? I think it kind of goes back to yeah. You know, what is, uh, what are, what are the top folks do? Are the, yeah. what are the f- top folks doing now better than anyone else? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I think there are, there are a couple of components to that. Um, and maybe the easiest way is to kind of talk a little bit about how we think about what makes a really, really strong salesperson. So when we assess salespeople, we look at three big categories of, of competencies, right? Obviously we look at their tax goal selling co- their tactical competencies. How good are they at actually just doing the things that you have to do every day as a salesperson, picking up the phone, hunting for new business, running a consultative sale, negotiating, you know, just the things that you have to do. And then we also look at um, what we started out talking about, which is their belief system. And, their, and part of that is their self-awareness. And that gets into things like, uh, and their self, their self-limiting beliefs or their supportive beliefs, right? And that helps us understand, okay, somebody who maybe doesn't have the kind of tactical skills, either because they're new to the job or they don't have the training, um, can, can we help them? Can we, can we help them get there? And what are the things that might trip them up if we're trying to help them along on this, on this development journey? And then, and then the last thing is we look at, do they want it? what we call their will to sell. And I think that's particularly important in sales because, you know, as you guys know, this is a job that a lot of people can kind of uh, almost just sort of fall into, right? Coming out of school, it pays well, it's reputable, and you start doing it for a couple of years, you have some success, and you pick up the, you kind of pick up your head after 10 or 15 years, maybe less, maybe more, and you kind of have to think, wait, hold on a second, what am I doing? Do I actually... (laughs) Do I actually even want to be here? Right? Do I like what I'm doing every day? We all know people like that, right? Maybe, maybe, we, have, maybe we have been those people at different points in our life. Um, and when you get alignment across those three, when we see alignment across those three, the people who want to be successful, the people who are willing to work on themselves and their belief system and their awareness, and then the ones that will take that drive to be success and that level of self-awareness and put it into improving their craft every single day day, whether that's working on their script or their pitch or deliver, whatever it is, um, those are the diamonds. Those are the, the the superstars, right? Those are the people mm-hmm. that are absolute rock stars. This is incredibly powerful. And, and I'm just, as I'm listening in um, and I'm just thinking from the perspective of a sales professional, I mean, what you just gave right there is, is something that's worth hitting pause and writing down those three categories to make a plan personally to go, what can I do? Um, in each one of those areas. And I want to talk start uh, just with the tactical side of this, um, because I think it's really interesting. There are uh, obviously a number of dimensions to being successful in, in when it comes to sales tactics. Where I'm curious, uh, we see, you know, we see a lot of interesting things in the clients that we work with um, across their sales team, across individuals when it comes to tactics 
that um, either A, need work and, and, and maybe B, are also just high impact tactics. Like if you got this one right, everything else might start falling into place. You know, these are, are high impact sales skills. I'm curious what your opinion is from the data that you see and in, in where a lot of sales teams across the board just seem to miss it in terms of sales skills. What what are the skills that maybe consistently score low and you know are worthy of a lot of of salespeople and sales leaders going, hey, you know what, in 2024, we really need to work on this. I'm I'm smiling because you want me to pick just, just one. <laughs> yeah. Well, it hey, is how about interesting. Top three? <laughs> I mean, it's been interesting. What what we've noticed is as we've started working, uh, you know, with with these assessments with our clients. But I'm curious, you have this bird's eye view, and obviously, there's a lot of different skills. So maybe, okay. So how about top three, Ben? We'll give you the Ooh. top three. Can we can we nail you down to that? Okay, yeah, top three, <laughs> the top three. I like that. So the first one, one of the ones that we see, and it's. It's not for lack of trying. It's not for lack of coaching because I think people are aware of this, but it's just hard mm-hmm. to get. It's hard to get right when you're practicing. Is asking appropriately probing questions mm-hmm. in a, in your you know, mm-hmm. in any any complex B two B sale, asking an appropriately probing and provocative question that shakes your 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 prospect out of out of their current paradigm. And gets them to start thinking. Oh, yeah, you're right. We got to do something different. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I, I want to play on this for a second. And I'm glad that you brought this up, Ben, because this is where confidence comes into play. My opinion on this is, if you if you're a seller who lacks confidence, maybe you're one who has some self limiting beliefs. It's going to be difficult for you to sit in front of an executive decision maker, a key influencer, and ask them that question. Because this this is where you're going to get to the root. This is where I, I think trust builds immediately is when that seller can sit in front of that executive, ask them the question that gets them to pause, where you see their eyes roll in the back of their head a little bit, or they have that pause because you know the wheels are turning in their head. Yeah. And I think this is where confidence comes into play. Would you agree on this one? Absolutely right. And we see... In our, in our, so in our data, we see uh, when we look at, at the selling attributes, asking a, an appropriately provocative question is consistently has uh, the lowest proportion of salespeople who score well on it across the uh, kind of hundreds of attributes that we, that we measure. And, and I think part of the reason for that, Larry, is because a lot of salespeople, uh, they want to be liked. By, yeah. their, by their prospects, right? And and of course, that that is a healthy thing. That's a social thing. But they want to be liked in a way that then gets, they think that if they ask that question where the CEO sitting across the table says, oh, God, I don't have the answer to that. Or, oh, God, I haven't thought about that. That they're going to get tossed out of the room, right? That they're mm-hmm. going to threaten the relationship. And mm-hmm. what they don't realize, and I'm so glad you, you, know, you nailed it, is no, that's how you, that's, Deep yep. relationship, right? You're you're a trusted advisor. You're making them think. Boom. Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm curious now. You got two more slots on this list. <laughs> to fill. Uh, so what else? What else are you seeing in addition to the the questioning issue? Um. So yep. So questions. Another one that is consistently weak, and this one really this one really surprises me, given the amount of money that we see. Uh, organizations spend and say that they are going to continue to spend on um, training and development. But um, we consistently see uh, teams score poorly on adhering to sales process. Sticking to a milestone centered sales process is something I, when, and, and it's interesting because we'll ask a couple of different ways. Do you have a sales process? Yes. Uh, the comp- teams score very well on that. Um, does your, does your manager, you know, kind of train you or coach you consistently? Does your manager train you on the sales process? Do they have awareness about sales process? The scores go down a little bit, but it's, it's still kind of okay. Right. Um, do you adhere consistently to the steps of your sales process? <laughs> Just totally false. And, and, and it's kind of like, what's going on there? Right. Like you, you invested all of this money in, in figuring out 
what the process is and building it into the CRM and going through, you know, the entire rigmarole. Um, and, and somebody in the organization somewhere is telling you about it at least some of the time, uh, but, but you're not sticking to it. And, and I think that gets to, you know, kind of one of the, the, the probably the third thing, the, the thing that we see as a consistent weakness is um, really, yeah, manager accountability um, and, and having sales managers who are able to take them Sells out of, um, and you know, going back to this, this uh, we started out talking about around ego and self awareness, taking themselves out of what used to be their role, which was individual contributor, rock star, whatever, whatever got them promoted, or maybe it was just buddy of the CEO, um, and putting themselves into a role of holding their salespeople accountable, being a coach, being a teacher, being a being a guide. Um, and, and we see that we see those two things sort of consistently, um, paired together and consistently, consistently be gaps for sales teams, poor sales process or, or poor adherence to sales process and very poor manager accountability. So, and I'm glad, well, I'm glad you brought up this accountability thing just for a moment. And I, and I hope we can expand upon this. So I'm going to throw you on the spot, Ben, but I know you can handle this is when you look at the poor accountability, what do you think attributes to that? I have my thought on this, but just based on your data, your knowledge at OMG, what do you think attributes to the lack of accountability? Oh man. Uh, (laughs) Um, Depending on depending on what kind of day I'm having when you ask me this, I'll give you you very different answers. Um, well, look like the, the, the charitable and, and, and also I think true, uh, response here. And we see it in the data is, um, you have a lot of managers that don't realize that they are what it, what it means to be a manager. And, and we will ask them, right. We will, we will ask them questions around, um, do you believe it goes back to beliefs. Do you believe that this is an important component of what an effective sales manager should provide? And we'll ask their salespeople too. Do you believe that this is an important component of what your manager should give to you? And are you getting it? And the, we consistently see the, it's, it's the one of the most reliable pieces of analyses we do is this disconnect on the bar chart, right? The sales manager says, ah, that's, that's not my job. And the salesperson says, I need this from you. And that just creates this, you know, uh, this organizational frustration. And honestly, at the individual level, this individual frustration, because you're not, you're not getting the investment in the sport that you need or that you feel you need to be successful. Mm. Yeah. These categories that you've introduced here are just super helpful. And, and I'm thinking about them from the lens of sales leaders and executives that are, are listening in. Obviously, you know, do you, um, let's just be honest, do you have a sales process or when's the last time you looked at it, you know, and, and thought about it? And then how well are you doing it, communicating, holding people accountable to that? I mean, that's something that as as a leader, it's easy to get sucked into the the momentum of the month and the quarter and the the deadlines and the goals and all of that, and to just assume that's being done. But I think that you know having a fresh look at that is important. And then as sales professionals too, being able to go, you know what, I, the data is I you know as a sales professional, I go I may want to fly by the seat of my pants. I may want to you know I may think I'm a better tap dancer or improv person. Um, than following a process. But the reality is the process, or as my Canadian friends say, the process is your friend, right? It is It is your friend. And so to learn it and to work with it and to stick to it and be, you know, the person on your sales team that does follow the process, I think is is a wise move right now. Because as much as we might think, you know, hey, I do better when I just wing it. The reality is um, the process, the data shows the process is your friend. So you can add more value to your clients and be more successful when you follow the process. Absolutely, absolutely right. And and the you know the the man the the manager awareness piece, you know, as well. And then the the manager's role in kind of helping to coach and enforce that process is big. And also the organization helping the manager to realize what exactly it is that their role is mm-hmm. now right yeah. your, your role your role is not just to come in and rescue the salesperson when they're struggling and it's not just to you know come in and provide exception pricing when the when the deal is above the exception price that's not actually your job 
right? Or like that, that's a piece of your job, but you're, it's a very small piece. You're in a totally different job. If you were a salesperson before you got a promoter's manager, you're in a totally different job than you were before, right? Your job is now to, to coach, to, to, um, yeah, to, to, to coach, to, to teach the, the people that's primarily to develop them. Um, there's another piece of research out there from another organization, um, that was really, really great research. And I wish, I wish we had gotten to it first, but we hadn't. Um, they, they asked, you know, what is it that they surveyed top performing salespeople across industries, about 500 of them. And, and they asked them, what is it that will, uh, is going to make you most likely to leave, assuming that you're, you're continue to perform well in your organization. And one of the top responses was not getting the appropriate level of investment and engagement from the executive, from executive leadership and from my frontline manager. Hmm. You know, I, I want to, I, 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 we got to stop on this one because I, I just have to share a quick story is what you just said I lived through. And, and I want sellers to really pay attention to what Ben had just said is I believe sellers, I'm talking the elites that are out there, the true sales professionals, they want you to hold them accountable. Yes. They want you to. And if I look back on all my decades in the sales channel that I grew up in, one of the big big, big disconnects is they assumed Larry didn't need any help. He didn't need any guidance because he was a top performer, which was completely the opposite is I wanted somebody to hold me accountable. I wanted somebody to push me. I wanted somebody to challenge me, but I wasn't getting it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And, and it's, you know, Larry, it's, it's, uh, you know, be, be, be a little kind to, to those folks you work with because absolutely. Uh, one of the things you see from a lot of, and we see this in, in our assessments from a lot of, a lot of top performing salespeople have a very entrepreneurial mindset, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I look at that as a leader and I think, well, Larry's a top performer and he scores as having an entrepreneurial mindset, man, the best thing I can do is get out of this guy's way and just, just, <laughs> just, just stay as far away as possible. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and what they, what they miss, what they don't understand, right. Like you were saying is, uh, entrepreneurs like like you guys are like i am like we still we want to be challenged we want to be held accountable yes, yeah we we want we still want structure right even though if we're in the business of putting structure in place for other people we still want some kind of structure and, and challenging ourselves we don't want babysitting we don't want hand holding necessarily but let's have a conversation at a strategic level about where we're going to go and uh and then and then you hold me accountable to it right whether that's the mm -hmm. people who if you're a ceo whether that's people who work for the work for you if you're a salesperson that's your manager that's the you know the, the sales leadership team but accountability is is absolutely accountability and then the flip side of it responsibility for the person absolutely critical for top performers love it what a fascinating and powerful conversation here today this this is so good i love the insights that uh, you and the team at objective management group are putting together this has been a game changer for us, for our clients. And uh, I just want to let you know we're cheering you on. The question I have now is, how can people get more Ben Tago in their life? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, well, hopefully I'll be back on here um, on the Selling from the Heart podcast. For sure. Another time. This has been a lot of fun. Um, but but until then, you know, definitely please follow me on LinkedIn. Um, and more importantly, we've got a research block where we, uh, we've got some great data scientists who are far better at statistics than, uh, than I am. And they mine the data that we have on, you know, over 2 million salespeople. And we're consistently pushing out new research with insights on uh, what we're learning from sales teams and, and the folks that we work with. So subscribe to our research blog as well and follow us on LinkedIn. I love oh, it. I love hey, it. Hey, Daryl, just really quick. Hey, Ben, before before uh, we sign off the podcast, you got to drop 60 more seconds. I, By the way, I love I love data and things like that just to help me become better. Just drop as, you know, we still have, we're well, you know, we're in the beginning part of 2024. So we got three quarters plus of selling opportunities out there. Just drop a couple pearls of wisdom. What could sellers do? Looking at this through the lens of, you, you know, as you lead the OMG team, what could sellers do to enhance their success as they move through 2024, just based on your observations, quick 60 second Ben tips 
as you take us away into a good rest of the new year? Oh man. Um, the great, great, great questions. Um, you know, se- selfish, <laughs> se- selfish plug. Um, <laughs> look, yeah, hold, hold it. Like Larry, like you said, hold the mirror up to yourself, right? Eva- get yourself evaluated. Um, and you know, again, reach out to me if, if you want to do that, or if you want to reach out to Larry, Daryl, these guys are, are partners, get yourself evaluated, understand where your gaps are, understand there are probably more than, than you are even aware of. Um, and then put in, get a coach, get a, invest in a coach. Selling is your profession. It is your vocation. It is a job that is directly tied to revenue. And the ROI on making that kind of investment is very clear for your work. And to be honest, um, the best coaches out there, and, and I've been a, a, a huge beneficiary of this, the best coaches out there will have a big impact on your personal life too. You'll see it pop up in relationships, you know, outside, outside mm-hmm. of work, which is, uh, at least, you know, at least to me, just so much more valuable than, um, you know, crushing quota or making presence club or anything else. Although that, that stuff's great too. <laughs> I love it. Oh, love it. good stuff, Ben. Ben, thank you. You're a true selling from the heart champion. We really appreciate you sharing time with us today. This has been incredible. Thank you guys for having me. It's great to be here. That's our pleasure. Awesome. Larry. Oh, Daryl. That was a mirror that? moment, right? Oh. You know, hold that mirror up and go, what, you know, I love, I love this concept. And I said at the beginning of the show, one of the things I love about the community at Selling from the Heart and uh, the sales leaders and all the people coming around Selling from the Heart is the type of people that aren't afraid to stand in front of the mirror and have an honest conversation with themselves about themselves, their team, all of that. Look, there's some some people that shy away from that, but the people that we hang out with are the type of people that go, hey, I want to know how I'm doing and I, I want to get better at this from every angle. And, and that's what I love about this conversation here is the mirror moment um, is something that is, is it's, it's, it's what separates the sales reps from the sales professionals. And it is, it's, it is the, it's the willingness to say, I want to get better. You know, absolutely. And, and, um, I've often said, right, I, man, I'm, I'm going to say it. I've always said this until somebody can prove me wrong on this one. Mirror never lies. Only the person looking into the mirror lies. And so the reason why I believe good salespeople out there are, are a rare breed is they're willing to hold that mirror up and say, you know what? I know I can become better. And that's yeah. our challenge to you this year. Put the mirror up. It's okay. It really is okay. Because we can all become better. We can all become better at this craft and elevating this wonderful f- profession we call sales. Yeah. So if you're open to that mirror moment for your team, uh, let us know. We're happy to have that conversation with you. We got so many great things coming up, Larry. I'm excited about what's next in this Selling from the Heart movement. So fired up about what what we're going to be rolling out here shortly. You want to like or subscribe. You want to <laughs> stay tuned because it's going to be amazing. It, sh- it sure is. Uh, hang on. Hang on. We're almost there. We're almost at the point where you can share some of the little secrets. They're going to be great secrets. It's going to take Selling from the Heart to the next level. Thank you to everybody that's liking or subscribing. And most of all, to those of you who are leaving reviews on the platform on which you listen, it helps us spread this movement of authenticity right here in the sales profession we all love. Till next time, keep being genuine, keep being authentic, keep building trust, have the courage to take the mirror moment, and most of all, sell from the heart.